This week on El Ham Radio, it's tower time. Time to get up on this old tower and take a lot of old cabling and antenna and equipment down and start putting nice, fresh, new cable and equipment back up there. That's what's coming up next on El Ham Radio. All right, folks. Well, we had Ken, KI4RWO, professional tower climber, and Brian, KY4BDP, up on the tower for this impromptu workday uh, at our secondary repeater site. And um, like a lot of sites probably around the, the country, around the world, uh, this, this site was really past due. You know, this is the site of the abandoned repeater site series of videos we did. Uh, and, uh, of course, now it's the occupied <laughs> repeater site once again. Uh, we've got a brand new shack up there, things like that. Uh, but the tower and many of the antennas on the tower still need a lot of help. Now, one of the last things we did, which we also did a short uh, series on, was uh, fixing the guy lines at this site and at our primary site. Uh, again, these sites are both 20 to 30 years old. Uh, the the uh, guy lines for the towers needed uh, needed help. They needed re- refreshing and refurbishing, retensioning and things like that. And so we did a, a series of videos covering some of that work that we've done uh, at both of those sites. Uh, so now we're ready to safely be able to get back on the tower here at the secondary site. And we want to, uh, again, get a lot of this old equipment off of the tower. Stuff that's been up there 15, 20, 25 years or whatever. Uh, get a lot of that stuff off of there and get some newer stuff on there. And so one of the things uh, the folks were doing that day is they were putting a new uh, GP3 antenna all the way at the top of the tower. Now, our two-meter repeater antenna had actually been maybe two-thirds uh, or a little bit higher up on this, this tower. And this tower is around 130 feet, something like that. Uh, so this is actually going to get us noticeably higher on the tower. So that'll give us uh, a little bigger footprint for the two meter repeater activity, which uh, serves uh, that area nicely. But also something that we've uh, built and uh, and people have been waiting for, uh, again in this area, is the GMRS repeater. We're going to be running a, a GMRS repeater in this area. There's a lot of tourism in this area. It's near Lake Cumberland. And uh, there's hiking and, and camping and all kinds of stuff that goes on there. Of course, boating and fishing on the lake. And so GMRS is a popular service. And so ever since we announced that we were going to have a GM, GMRS repeater, we've had a number of folks asking us, hey, you know, can I use your repeater? Uh, and we've, we've had to keep telling them it's not quite in service yet. Uh, you know, it's coming soon. Uh, and so this will be part of that. We're going to get this uh, dual band antenna up on the tower. We'll be using a duplexer and our two meter repeater and the GMRS service will be able to use the same antenna. And being at the top of the antenna uh, on this tower, again, up on a pretty good sized knob. Uh, I forget the, the height of this knob, but it's, uh, I believe it's over a thousand feet. Uh, it's going to give us pretty good coverage uh, in the area. And we also get very good coverage with our primary site, uh, which has two meters and 70 centimeters. And uh, I believe we've got GMRS already going there as well. So we're trying to provide uh, several services in these, these areas. Uh, again, a big part of it is not only for the local population, but there's lots of tourism in this area. And a lot of those folks like to use non-pure ham related services like GMRS. And, and we're fine with that. We're okay with that. Uh, we can provide those services uh, as well. Uh, we kind of look at them as entry points for full ham licensing and operation. A lot of people start with CB and GMRS and, and of course FRS and MERS and things too. So we're, we're okay with that. So uh, here you can just see they're getting the, uh, the antenna ready to go, getting the little uh, elements on it, uh, going to get it attached, uh, get the coax attached, some nice uh, fresh brand new, um, I believe they're using LMR 400 um, uh, for this, uh, brand new cable run. Uh, again, we're going to take all the old stuff off and we'll probably check some of it. Uh, but I know the, the large hard line and there's some smaller hard line stuff at the original telecom. This was a paging system, I think, when it first went in. Uh, again, coming up on 30 years ago, somewhere in there. Uh, a lot of that stuff's been up there ever since. And, and we never used some of that cabling. Uh, and so then we've added our own stuff to it over the decades. So it was just time for a lot of that to come off. We had started a little bit of that work uh, a couple of years ago before, before uh, 
things started to happen the last couple of years, as we know. And it was time to get back on this. So now that, again, it's safe to get on the tower because the guy lines have all had attention paid to them. Uh, you know, we had a nice day, so it was time to get up there. So, again, Ken and Brian spent several hours uh, on the tower that day. You know, that this kind of work, it always takes longer than you hope and think that it will. And that was true in this case. But they pretty much got everything off. All the old antennas we don't use, at least right now. Uh, all the old cabling. So, uh, you know, this is the kind of thing where this kind of work, this kind of maintenance should be performed periodically. If you're operating locations, folks, and you're operating some towers, they don't have to be up on knobs like these are. You may be on top of buildings or something like that. But when's the last time anybody got up on the tower? You know, when's the last time some of this kind of work was done? What we have found, and no real su surprise, but is that our antennas, although they were working still, all needed refurbishment, uh, if not outright replacement. And so it's really uh, helping our services capability to get fresh antennas for our 2 meters and 70 centimeters and GMRS and these other services. Uh, these things just don't last forever, you know, and, uh, and we do get uh, pretty good weather throughout the year here in central Kentucky and southeastern Kentucky. So, uh, again, here you can just see uh, the guys are up on the tower. You can see some of these antennas are leaning. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that the, that the workers did is they did leave pretty much all of the, uh, you know, there's like right angle mounting brackets. You can see a number of those. You can see our wireless Internet connection uh, uh, dish up there for the, the microwave link. And, of course, you can see the solar panel sneaking in down there at the bottom. Uh, so a lot of those horizontal mounting brackets, they pretty much left that stuff up there because we're, we're probably going to be going back with more equipment and more antennas. But for now, we took down everything that's not actively being used. And a lot of that stuff uh, may be fixable, you know, maybe repairable, but a lot of that's going to need refurbishment uh, to clean it up, make sure the contacts are good and uh, that the things aren't uh, cracked or broken or, or whatever. So we wanted to get it off there for now, especially all this old cabling and stuff. And, um, and then we get kind of a clean start with the tower and, uh, and with some fresh uh, equipment on there. And we can start to document and better keep track with what's going on with, uh, with this site. Because and, and, we want to put several things there. We'd like to get six meters going up here and, and some stuff like that. So, yeah, past time to do it. Here you can see some of that, that old large inch, uh, inch and a quarter. Uh, inch and a half, I forget what it is, the hard line that was part of the original installation for the telecom company. Uh, we had cut some of that off. Uh, you know, it's really hard to deal with that stuff. It's very heavy. Uh, it's not very flexible, of course, hard line, even the, the smaller hard line, which there's some of that that was on the tower too. Um, and so to, to safely get it off of there, you know, is a, is a concern. And then there's not always that much you can do with it. A lot of times people talk about reusing it or selling it. it you know, it's, people aren't really looking to, to come, you know, maybe a few hundred miles to pick up a relatively small amount. If we had a spool, uh, a decent part of a spool or something, that'd be one thing. But here's, again, a good shot of, uh, of the guys up on the tower um, working on getting uh, uh, old lines down, old hard line, the, the smaller stuff and the, and the bigger stuff and, and some other cabling that we had put up there. Um, and it's just way past time for all this to happen. So uh, a lot of work. Um, with getting the guidelines, you know, back up to snuff and tension right, and, uh, you know, getting our new shack, getting the tower ready to go. We're going to be painting the tower at our other site. Um, I don't think this one really needs it yet, but uh, it's just the kind of maintenance you may have to do as a club, folks, you know, being a club-oriented channel. Um, and, and hopefully more often than, than some of this had happened. You know, some of this got a little bit out of hand. But now we're getting really caught up on this, and it's going to be a good thing. So we're going to... Uh, Stop here for just a moment, bring you into the next section, and we'll bring you folks right back. All right, folks, we're going to start to wrap this one up with some panoramic views that KY4BDP Brian took while he was uh, up on the tower. Uh, obviously, you can see we're up pretty high on this knob and, of course, then on the tower itself. And as you can tell, lots of other towers around because it is a high point in the area. And all kinds of telecom and, and radio and TV are up on this, these hills. Uh, that'll, that'll pretty much do it for this one, folks. Uh, we have to do these maintenance projects on our club assets. Uh, sometimes they can get away from us for a little while, but we need to get caught up on them and do them. And uh, if you've got skill sets within your club, try to share those. Try to teach those to other newer club members. Uh, we're trying to do that within our club. Uh, some things are pretty specialized, and you can only transfer so much of it. 
but how to do things and why to do things and what kinds of tools and, and things to use. Share that knowledge. Uh, the actual radio part of ham radio is, is really fun and awesome, but we need to do some of these fabrication and maintenance types of activities as well. So we'll wrap it up. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. We will catch you folks in the next video, 73.